Welcome to section 7, titled Making it Mobile First. In the last section, we looked at making D3 maps with GeoJSON. In this section, and particularly in this video, we'll make our map more responsive, rendering it at different dimensions depending on screen size, as well as adding in a loading GIF so that users know to wait for the map to load. Let's jump right into our editor. The 7.1 source code file starts off where we left our Corpleth map from the last section. We'll want to delete the static height and width variables at the start and replace them with a margin variable, as we did in our earlier section on responsive design. We'll declare a number of variables in a row using the parse int function in a D3 selection to get the width style value of the body element on our DOM. After subtracting the width of our body by our margins left and right and computing our height in relation to our width, we have a way to dynamically grab dimensions for our visualization as the body size on our screen changes. Well, what we've typed already can be used to resize the map container or SVG based on our screen size, we'll need to access the scale method of how the paths are projected to adjust the actual size of the rendered map. Remember that D3 maps render according to the Albers USA projection if not specified. So let's simply store that method in the projection variable and chain in our scale method of which we've taken a width which should adjust automatically with our margin variable, as well as translated the width and height so that our map should be centered within our SVG. Finally, we use the d3.geo.path method and feed it the projection to ready the normal rendering process, while including our responsive height and width as margin values. If you were to load our code now, it would automatically adjust depending on the, the size of the body element, which adjusts according to the window size of our browser. But we'll want to set up an event listener on the window and call a function called resize whenever this listener is triggered. If you'll head over to 7.1.2 source code, we can begin this process. As in past exercises, we've selected the window and on our resize event have passed our resize function. Notice that our resize function begins by establishing the new width and height with another parse int method. We'll reapply these new values to the projection and we'll adjust the actual map div that holds the SVG with the same width and height variables. The only thing left is to re-render the actual paths that create our map, which we do in the final lines of the function through providing our path values as the new D attribute of everything with the class of county, which if you'll remember, is every subunit of paths in the entire map. If you want to save your work and check it out in the browser, you should see a map that fits onto the initial screen size when it's loaded, but also responds when browser size is changed. Due to the complexity of the GeoJSON, loading is still a bit slow. So let's jump into an easy way of including a GIF to show the, load the user that we're loading. A plugin called SpinJS is shared under an MIT license, isn't CSS, image, or resolution dependent, and renders nice loading GIFs. Check it out on the following link, or in GitHub, where there's a short rundown of its functionality. If you're working along, feel free to download the minified version and save it on your local host, just so that you can access it as a resource to your code. Once you've done this, you can create a variable that stores all of the options related to the loading GIF, such as lines, length, width, radius, speed, direction, and so on. As our spinner will be running early in our code, notice that we've placed our ops or options variable towards the top. Only a few components are needed to trigger the spinner, including a target location, which is specified by document get element by ID spinner, a new spinner call that takes your options variable, and a spin method that's past the target of where you want the spinner to appear. This will start the spinner when the code runs through this point which is before the JSON call. And by passing a false value to the spin method, you could stop the spinner whenever you want, like we've done towards the top of the JSON call, spinner.spin.false. Now our map informs the user that their map is loading, loads the map, and map container size to the window, and changes the size of the visualization if the browser changes. It's still a little slow, but this is something you could fix by using a smaller data set or turning your data set into topo JSON. Now that we've added some greater functionality, let's check out our current map in the browser. Now our map informs the user that the map is loading, loads the map and container size size to the window, and changes the size of the visualization if the browser size changes. It's still a little slow, but this is something you could fix by using a smaller data set or turning your data set into TopoJSON. One final tool you might want to check out if you're merging large data sets for a visualization, which can take a long time, is Mike Bostick's Q.js which is available at the following link. This enables you to queue up the order in which you feel like your external data sets should load, as well as what functions should await these loads. This saves the additional wait time of having functions fire before the data set is loaded. Next, we'll look at how our visualizations can fit into a larger responsive framework with Bootstrap. See you then.